guys, welcome back if you're new to my channel. Hey there, my name's Morgan and I make videos documenting my journey from digital marketing into the UX design field and I offer advice where I can. So to be completely honest, I didn't feel completely qualified to make an educational video like this about the actual UX design process because I haven't landed a job yet. And at the end of the video, I will address how I am moving forward in my job search and what I'm doing with that. But you guys ask me these questions a lot about what UX design tools you should know and what tools I like to use. So I figured that I would just make a video explaining all of that. And I'm just gonna start with a brief explanation of each tool that you're generally expected to know, and then I'll get into what I actually use myself. I do wanna be clear that this is a video for UX design. There are different tools that you will need to know for for UI design, but that's not my expertise. Not that I have expertise, but that's just not, that's not my field. <laughs> So first is Balsamic. Balsamic is a low fidelity wireframing tool, and it's basically used for really quick low fidelity wireframing just to get the idea across. That way you don't get lost in a lot of detail. It uses basically placeholder images and stuff like that to make it look like a hand-drawn wireframe, and it's very cool if you don't like sketching. It works for me because I find sketching to be very tedious, especially drawing the boxes over and over again so it's just a lot easier. There is a paid version for their cloud app, but the desktop app is free. Hey guys, it's Future Morgan coming back to tell you that the Morgan in this video has lied to you about the pricing for Balsamic. So there's the Balsamic cloud plan where you can do two projects for $9 a month or $90 a year. I don't think many people would wanna go beyond that, but then there's one for 20 projects and then one for 200 projects. And then what I used was wireframes for, don't be rude, that's my dog. Wireframes for desktop, that's what I was using. I was under the impression that it was free, but it turns out I was doing a 30 day trial. So it's actually $89 for a license and I'm probably not going to purchase it myself unless I start going into freelance because it is very useful to explain designs to other people. I recommend trying the 30 day trial if you are a person who doesn't like physically drawing things, which I totally get, it can get extremely tedious, or maybe your drawings are kind of sloppy and you work with clients that you need to show designs to. I would recommend it. It seems to be a one-time payment of $89. Not too bad, honestly. And then if you are doing freelance, then you could write it off as a business expense. So I would look into it. Next is Figma. Figma is a very popular UX UI design tool and prototyping tool. This is a tool that you could do low fidelity, mid fidelity, and high fidelity wireframes, as well as prototypes. People have different definitions of what mid fidelity and high fidelity are. My definition of a mid fidelity prototype is that you don't have actual content put into the app and it's not something with any aesthetics in it so no colors or anything like that. But there should be enough information there to make a semi-functioning prototype. And if you don't know, a prototype is basically when you make your design clickable and you can navigate through it as if you were actually using the app. Figma is great because they're constantly improving. They recently added a whiteboarding feature, which is very cool if you wanted to collaborate with teammates. So we'll see if businesses start to pick Figma up more as their primary design tool. As for the price, Figma does have a free plan that is limited, and then there is also a more advanced and unlimited paid plan that is $12 a month. Next is Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is very similar to Figma. It is a UX UI design tool as well as a prototyping tool. I really like Adobe XD for their animations. And if you use other Adobe creative products like Photoshop, Illustrator, Arrow, etc., then Adobe XD you might understand the interface a bit more and it might be a better option for you than Figma. I believe they also have a limited free plan, otherwise it's $9.99 a month for the single app. Next is Sketch. Sketch is another design tool and it is very popular among businesses. If you look at job descriptions for UX designer positions, Sketch is the most common program that you're expected to know. I'm personally not a huge fan. Sketch is sort of the OG design tool, so I think that it's so common among businesses 
because if they've had a UX design team for years, they're not going to switch tools because all of their stuff is already in one program. That's at least what makes sense to me. Or maybe businesses who are just starting a UX design team don't really know where to start and Sketch is just the most common one that they see that they decide that's what their designers should know. But there's a lot of strong competition now and I'm hoping that businesses will start moving away from Sketch because one of the downfalls is that Sketch is a Mac OS only tool so you can't use it on Windows. People have also complained about its prototyping abilities because they only recently came out in 2018 while other tools have had it for a little bit longer than that and they've been able to refine and just make it a much easier process. My advice would be to learn the interface of Sketch, use the free trial, do maybe one project in there, just that way you can say that you do know how to use Sketch. It will open up more job opportunities for you. And Sketch is $9 a month. Next is Envision. Envision is known for prototyping as well as design handoffs, which is very important. The most common use for Envision is you create the screens in Sketch and then you upload them to Envision. So that way the rest of your team can see everything, including the dev team, your product manager, they can make comments. You can turn it into a prototype and then the dev team can see the specs and the code for your design. They do have a free plan for solo designers, which is great if you're just starting out and looking to learn. And if you wanna try working in a team, they have a plan for $7.95 a month. Next is Marvel. So Marvel is a really simple prototyping tool. You can also use it for wireframing and designing as well, but I've only ever used it for prototyping. It's really cool because you can just take a picture of your hand-drawn sketches, or you can upload your frames from Balsamic and you just draw hot spots over the clickable areas and then you can navigate through a hand-drawn app as if it was a real clickable prototype. Marvel is really great for communicating the navigation of a low fidelity sketch that you have to other people. There is a limited plan where you can only do one project at a time. You can upload more than one project, but then your previous projects are just gonna get locked and you can't use them. Otherwise, it's $12 a month. So my camera overheated from being in the sun, so it's gonna be a little bit darker in here. And I also opened up my door to let it air out a little bit and let the air conditioner in. So sorry if the sound's weird and sorry if you can't see my face. So anyway, the next one I wanna talk about is Adobe Creative Suite. The reason that I mention Adobe Creative Suite is just because it's mentioned in a lot of job descriptions. I'm not positive what your day-to-day -day would look like with Adobe Creative Suite. I guess it depends on the industry. For example, if you're doing something with a lot of videos or AR potentially, you may need to do mock-ups in After Effects or Premiere Pro in order to sort of show your design and how a video or an AR function would work in your app or what it would look like. But specific programs that I see mentioned are Adobe XD, Adobe Illustrator, so I suppose they would want you to work with graphics or icons, and then Photoshop potentially for editing imagery or making mock-ups sometimes. It could also just be something that the business wants you to have under your belt so that way they don't have to hire someone outside in case they need that work done. It could just make you an overall more competitive candidate. People who are more well-versed in the Adobe Creative Suite have used Photoshop for their wireframes. I personally don't, I don't know many who do. It's usually just for people who already know how to use Photoshop. So Adobe X D is included in the Adobe Creative Suite. The entire Adobe Creative Suite is $53 a month, but if you are a student, then you can get it for $20 a month. So what do I use? It all really depends on my goal for the design. I'll use Figma or Adobe XD generally for my design tools and my prototyping. I find their interfaces to be really easy to navigate and businesses are starting to pick them up as primary design tools. I'll use Adobe XD if animations are important or at least communicating those animations to someone else. I'll also use it for more complex apps. So maybe it involves AR, like I said earlier, or videos. So that way I can more easily move those things into Premiere Pro or After Effects. I really like using Figma for more static designs, particularly when I'm trying to communicate something to a client, just because I'm more familiar with it. And you can also have multiple pages within a design, so it just keeps things a lot more organized. Unfortunately, that is not something for Adobe XD. You can't have multiple pages. You only have one file and one page, so you gotta put everything in there, or you have to have multiple files. Regarding Adobe Creative Suite, I have experience with Adobe Creative Suite, but I don't use anything in my designs regularly other than Adobe XD. 
regarding Sketch and Envision. I think they are important to know because they are industry standard right now, and Envision definitely is the easiest design handoff tool for when you're working with a dev team. So because of that, I'm currently working on a project in Sketch and I plan on uploading it to Envision once I'm finished, just so that way I can show that I know how to use it and use it in a case study so that way employers can see that as well. Balsamic is something that I use if I need to communicate a low fidelity design to someone else because you know when you draw or write something and it makes sense to you but it just doesn't make sense to other people. I'll avoid using pencil and paper in those scenarios and I will use balsamic. Otherwise, I just use pencil and paper or I use my iPad to create low fidelity sketches. And if you like to use pencil and paper to sketch too, I'll leave a link to some free low fidelity wireframe sketching templates down below. I also don't really use Marvel unless I need to communicate the navigation of a low fidelity sketch to someone else. If I'm doing a solo project, I usually just wait until the mid fidelity prototype phase because in my head I know how it's going to flow and also I have it in the user flow and everything. So I just wait until that phase. I don't find it necessary to use Marvel if I'm just working on something by myself. There are tons of videos on how to use these tools. I'll leave some channels and videos down below that I found helpful. Now regarding what I'm doing moving forward, I've stopped job hunting for the time being. I recently interviewed with a company that I really wanted to work for and I didn't get it. The thing is, I wasn't a good fit for the role because it was a junior UI designer position and I'm UX focused. I feel like I was a great fit for the company and the feedback that I got back was exactly what I thought was that my UI skills didn't match the position but I would be a better fit for the company if they had a UX design role. So this whole thing just sort of made me reflect. And it's also sort of what sparked my video on the mistakes that I made during my boot camp and what I would have done differently. If you saw that video, then you know that I don't have enough case studies, at least not enough high quality case studies to be competitive in the job market. Sorry, my camera overheated again, even though it's not in the sun anymore. So I don't know what's going on, but today is clearly not a good filming day for me. So anyway, I was focusing on the wrong things. The next six to eight weeks, I'm going to be spending conducting new case studies as well as ones that have been on the back burner for a while now. I'm just gonna focus strictly on case studies and I'm probably just going to start linking employers to my Behance profile instead of my website. And I'm just gonna take my website down and rework that. I want to have at least three new case studies in the next six to eight weeks and then I'll start working on my website again. If I can be real for a minute, I think that my lack of case studies and dependence on courses comes from a real place of insecurity. I think I was self-sabotaging in the sense that if I didn't have enough case studies, and I could blame not getting a job on not having case studies. And that's just so backwards. So I've got to stop with the self-sabotaging. I need to move forward. I know what I have to do. I think I'm just scared. But in the coming weeks, I'm going to be posting videos showing my progress through my case studies, not just to help you guys, hopefully, but also to keep myself accountable. I'm hoping to do one video in real time and then another one probably retrospectively just because it takes a lot of work recording your process and it makes things take a lot longer. The sooner I finish these case studies, the sooner I can start applying for jobs again, the sooner I can get a job, and then the sooner I can help you guys on your career paths. So that's it for today. I hope that you guys feel like you have a bit of a stronger foundation and a place to start, and hopefully you can get designing. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. If you comment, subscribe, it all helps me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.